Hi guys, I thought I would invite you into my sewing room where I create all of my stuff. I know that when I first started setting up my sewing room, I took a look at others on YouTube, so I thought I would share mine. Uh, this is where I hang uh, my ironing board. And I, I'll be honest with you, I rarely get it down. It looks It's really more for looks because I use this area here as a pressing station most of the time. And this is a... Um, quilters square a uh, soft square block that I use and um, it comes in very handy that's the name of it got it at Joanne Fabrics and then I also got this nice uh, cutting board at Joanne Fabrics and these are my baskets here in the back that I have a lot of my leather working stuff in and my embroidery um, stuff that I use for my embroidery. This is a nifty way that I store my buttons with all different colors. Here's some just scrap leather that I have and some of my leather tools. This up on the wall is from a very dear friend of mine. I got it for Christmas and it just is perfect for my room. I really, really love it. And then this light <clears throat> is actually a red light that has a crisscross here. And I can move this down over top of my cutting table and it will make a um, um, crisscross. It will make crosshairs on my um, table. It's like if I'm, I need a crosshair on my shirt to get perfect right angles for my embroidery, I will use that sometimes. Then uh, back here uh, is, it's pretty messy, but it's a storage area for all of my scrap material. I have my scraps by different colors. And then you can see uh, right here, my son-in-law made me hooks. They're just the, the bicycle hooks and I had the tubes, the thick tubes, and I hang all my leather this way. So you can see my leather hanging here and there's some more leather back there just hanging. And then these are all my scraps. I have them by color. Here is um, one of my new toys. I've had it for a couple months. This is a leather um, uh, skiver. So you can skive leather down and make it thinner on the edges for when you're um, getting ready to sew seams on purses and straps and and anything that you need to put seams together this will um, skive your leather down and this was one of my first decorations that I put up in the sewing room and on there are all of the girls in my family so I'm grandma and then my two children Courtney and Caitlin and my two grand girls Nevaeh and Grayson so they come down and sew, and every once in a while, even my grandson Warren will show an interest uh, when I'm down in the sewing room where he'll want to come in and sew with me. Then over here, I have a really nice area. This is um, my Cowboy 341. This is an industrial sewing machine, and I sew all of my leather work here on this nice beauty. Um, my son-in-law attached baskets right here so it's just down below so that I can quickly drop my clips in and that lighters to singe my threads with and my um, thread cutters and pullers and whatnot and then my son-in-law also made me this nice removable table so it just slides in and out when I first bought this machine it had um, these holes right here and the table would screw down in and I'd have to screw it and unscrew it whenever I wanted to use my cylinder arm versus a flatbed and it was a lot of work so I told him what I needed and he made that for me then over here on this side I got this nice container uh, from uh, Walmart and that holds all of my leather uh, tools and um, supplies. Then over here 
my husband and uh, father-in-law who has since passed away and this was about 20 years ago did this side of my sewing room for me so it gives you an idea um, how much I've grown since in the last 20 years it was more just in this corner okay so this gives you an idea I'm trying to back up to get it all in so I'll walk over here I hang um, all of my threads that's my industrial thread and these are all of my threads by color and then over there are the odds and ends my um, scissors and my embroidery hoops and then I also have se uh, several machines this is a Singer Heavy Duty um, I use this machine a lot for heavier materials like bag linings, um, minky material. And then when I first started into leather, I also used it for that, but I quickly moved up to the industrial machine for my leather work. Then over here is my Imagine Serger, and I use this all the time. Uh, even though you can't see the seams in my bags that I make, I still serge the lining just to give it extra protection. And I try to serge all of my seams. Here's a more close-up of my colors of the thread. Uh, back here, I have um, a, uh, a crafting tool. This is a burnisher for when I want to burnish the edges of my leather straps. Then I have a section for my TV up here. And there are my scissors. So it's real handy. Those are just magnetic bars that are up on um, the pegboard. It's just a real easy way to put them on. I use them all the time that way. This is my brother, um, SE400. Um, this was my first sewing embroidery machine and um, that they came together. I had a Kenmore sewing machine for like the first 15 years and then uh, about five years ago switched over to this machine and that was my first experience with embroidering but f realized very quickly that a 4x4 four four hoop was not enough for me. Uh, so I got my feet wet with embroidering and quickly moved up. So I use this strictly for sewing now. I moved up to an um, PE 770 and had it for about a year and then I realized that a 5x7 frame wasn't big enough so I moved up to this baby here and this is a PRS 100 a Persona and I adore it. Um, I almost bought a 6 needle uh, just so I wouldn't have to change the threads, but the cost between um, a single needle and a six needle uh, was almost double, and I don't mind changing my threads, quite honestly. So this does the trick, and I'm extremely pleased with it. So that's my embroidery machine. And then this cabinet over here holds a lot of my embroidery stuff. I still need to get something for the wall right here. I had a nice chalkboard, but my husband took it upstairs into his office. <laughs> then over here, I've got little buttons here for decorations. And then here is one of my pride and joys. These, uh, this shelving unit, um, there was a store going out of business, so I got the shelves. And then my son-in-law made me these baskets out of old school rulers. So um, those are rulers that I've collected over the years and um, went ahead and he made me baskets out of them. So I'll give you a quick 360 around the rim. You'll notice I'm missing my W up there. It fell off the wall today and broke. So now I have to get another W. But I know they're still at Hobby Lobby, so. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, 
This um, is a nice uh, string that I have hanging from the ceiling. Um, sometimes I make dresses, um, wedding dresses, and I'll make a body mold of the, the young lady um, out of um, uh, duct tape. I'll duct tape it around her and make her body form and then stuff it and then I hang the body form from here and I use this to get a perfect fit for her wedding dress when I make it. And then lately it's also been holding my straps for my purses so that when I use edge paint on my straps it's a nice drying area as well. So it's a two-fold thing. So this gives you an idea of how things just move around in my room. An area that I have set up in my basement to um, use to stage my stuff. So like when I make purses or um, I help my son and daughter with the gray wren um, sewing and crafts and they do footballs and baseballs and basketballs and volleyballs and um, they embroider on them and soccer balls we stage a lot of that here and um, take pictures of them and then we post them on the gray wren and then I have my dressmaker there where when I make purses I try to put them on the the, the body to give a, a an idea of the size of the purse so I hope you like this tour uh, please like and subscribe